Okay, so I'm starting with an outline that I drew out previously. Um, when, when I start a painting of a face or pretty much anything, I um, draw it out either in pencil or vine charcoal and then I go over it with a very thin outline and that's what you're seeing there. There's an outline drawn with kind of a, a brown that I made. And um, you'll notice that I outlined all the shadow shapes first and that's where I go to when I'm painting. I go to the shadows um, in the face first and that helps me to uh, use as a baseline to figure out the skin tone and the highlight side of the skin tone. So I'm going in there and go, uh, making my own brown to get into those shadow areas and shadows typically can be found in any place where there's a hollow or if there's a cast shadow like a cast shadow from the nose is very typical. On this one there was a sunlight natural lighting on the model's face and then um, it was just at the right time of day to get some good sharp shadows. Shadows are kind of nice because they help to articulate the form. If you don't have shadows it becomes really hard to make the face look 3D. So anyway um, I'm showing you all those shadow areas. The under the nose is a cast shadow. To the right there is more of a form shadow which is a softer transition. Remember that that cast shadows have more of a sharp edge and form shadows gradually shift into the shadow side. And I am working with yellow, just a, a lemon yellow, a red, which is that bright red, blue, which I think is ultramarine blue, black, and white. And that's it. So that's the only colors I'm using here. So I started off by making my own kind of dark brown. It looks darker than it actually is here, but I made orange first, so yellow plus red, and then I added blue to it. I didn't use black on the um, shadows. There's some shadow shadows cast from the hair. Do you see how the shadows curve around the face? That's important too. So I'm going to talk to you here about blending, how to blend in skin tone. And I'm also going to talk to you about mixing skin tone and also brush direction when you're painting a face. And you always have to compare value to values. Uh, that's what I was doing there for the eyebrows. I was asking myself, are they darker than the shadows or are they paler? And just to help you with this, um, I'm going to go ahead and do the eyes too. I, at first I thought maybe I wouldn't, but um, I think it's important. So I've done the, some of the skin around the eyes and then I go in there making sure to get a top lid and the crease above that top lid as well. And I'm using some blue to make it go dark. When you're doing an iris, so the iris is a colored part of the eye, it's always going to be darker uh, near the top lid and then it'll get a little bit warmer as it goes down. Not by adding white, but by adding a richer type of brown, like think burgundy there, if you're doing brown eyes. Same is true of blue eyes, it would be darker at the top, paler at the bottom, same with green too. And the reason why is because the eyelashes extend out and create kind of a, bl a block of the light. So there's a shadow cast onto the eye itself. And I'm also noticing that I needed to lighten up a little bit of those uh, shadow areas. It went a little too dark. And that's okay. It's just not that big of a deal. You just adjust it. You know, that is one of the perks to working with acrylic paint is that you can adjust it um, after it's dried, which is just five to ten minutes. So I am starting to think about how my strokes are curving or wrapping around that face. You have to understand that the face itself is a sphere shape and there are multiple like semi-spheres within that shape. So see just underneath that lip I was curving my stroke wrapping it underneath that lower lip there because um, that kind of helps to articulate that form. On the cheek I'm going to be curving around that cheek. So this is something complex that I'm showing you today. Um, there are students who are already working on this and doing a fantastic job. And for the most part, you're doing what I'm doing here. You're making sure your strokes are wrapping around. You're checking your, your, your values and the color temperature. So there's almost always going to be a little bit of a shadow on the underside of the nose too. Top lip is almost always going to be darker than the uh, bottom lip. The bottom lip tends to stick out and catch the light. So those are some basic rules. We went over those a little bit when we talked uh, about portrait drawing. We did portraiture. 
And of course, anything that is a cavity or a hole is going to be dark. Anything that projects out like a cheekbone or a nose is going to oftentimes catch the light. And you do have to um, recognize that the eyes are spheres and the skin around them acts kind of like a sphere too. It, it bulges out. Um, there's a little pocket underneath the eye. The top lid is almost always going to be darker, so think like eyeliner almost. And the bottom lid is going to be paler than the top lid. And you can usually see a little bit of the underside of the skin there. When you're doing whites of the eyes, they're never white. They always have some kind of a flavor. In this uh, picture, the eyes were in shadow, so they become kind of gray. So you can see there's a blue influence, and in, I think I used blue and a little bit of pink in there plus white, or blue plus red and white. I remember you have a recipe now for gray. It's just the three primaries, red, blue, yellow, and a little bit of white. And this is all time lapse. There's uh, no way I was actually working this fast. I'd like to, but that's not happening. So here we're working on. I'm working on that form sh shadow side a little bit. That's why there was that transition. Remember we talked about blending. There are really three methods of blending. I'm, I'm actually using pretty much all of them there. So one is working wet into wet. The other is trying to match a similar value, which is what I just did there on the cheek. Uh, so like there's also a dry brush method where you take um, wet paint into a dry area and push that that uh, wet paint into uh, on top of dry which is called a dry brush or scumble and I'm zooming in so you can see the direction of my stroke you see on that cheekbone how the, the stroke curves around there how I twisted my brush there inside of the bridge of the nose to make it kind of flare out like a fan it's a fanned out stroke so your brush directions really do help um, the form to look 3D. And this may look a little bit more purplier than it actually is, just as a heads up. I do tend to lean my shadows a color. I don't like it when the shadows are just brown. It's like I like to look for uh, cool colors within shadows. And there you can see that I'm trying to think of a sphere when I'm trying to get that cheekbone. And you can see I'm curving my stroke, almost like how Van Gogh curves his stroke in like Starry Night. I'm trying to suggest that. Same thing here. I'm trying to curve my stroke, wrap it around that cheekbone, paying attention to value and temperature. And if I make a mistake, I try not to make a big deal about it. I'll just go back in and address it later. So skin tone is difficult. It's not a bad idea to um, make sure you take a photograph in black and white and compare your um, photo reference in black and white to your painting in black and white too. Value is more important than matching a perfect color. For highlights, I tend to put in a warm uh, on skin tone. So. Uh, I would add yellow or a dot of red to a highlight. And that tip of the nose, it's like a ball, so you have to make sure you articulate that too. When you're doing grooves in the face, you have to make sure that's a gradient, otherwise the grooves in the face could make the person look like they're 80 instead of 8. See there how I'm curving that stroke? I'm just twisting that brush. Remember I told you it's really important that you twist your brush between your fingers or you rotate your wrist. You get kind of your whole arm into it. That's one of the reasons why we stand up while we paint. So you can actually get your arm a little bit loose. It's a, an important thing that you're able to do that. Watch some professional painters paint. You'll see that they're doing that too. That there, There's a lot of action going on. Uh, it may seem like a activity where you don't move around a lot but you should be moving and activating that brush and there's the highlight so I am working from darks to midtones to the very lightest lights so here's what I have so far the yellow is a tone that's still exposed 
that's where the highlight is on that forehead and that forehead also is like a sphere and those are the things that I remind myself too as I'm painting I'm like okay forehead think how would you paint a sphere if the lights coming from above I'm like okay I can do this that way it's not as overwhelming if you're not paying attention to the direction of your stroke if you're not following the contours of the face, what can happen is your face can end up looking really flat. Brightening up some of those highlights. And it is important that you switch between brushes. I have, um, I think I used four or five brushes for this. You may have to wash your brushes if you don't have enough. It's also not a bad idea for you to bring in your own brushes. By the way, lips have skin tone in them. They're not just pink or hot red like colors. They have um, skin tone mixed in. The top lip has a little bit of purple in there as well. And remember, top lip is darker than the bottom lip, and you want to catch uh, a little bit of a highlight on that lip too. So I'm not going to show you anything uh, about hair today. I'm just showing you ways that you can paint the face and blend that face so that it looks more natural and what I'm doing today is two layers ideally I would put more on so it's only a two layer quick demo to show you how to do this yeah and you really are lucky because that acrylic dries so fast you can make adjustments pretty quickly and that's a good thing about block day as well you have a little bit more time so this took me about the same length of time it did for, for a block day. It's like the same amount of time there. So those of you who are working on faces, this is good for you to practice and try. Even if you're not working on a face right now on this painting, uh, you may have an occasion to do so again. We are going to be doing one more painting before um, we end the school year. And it is important that your painting has volume. So here's what it looks like at the end of the demo. Um, if you want help on skin tone, please don't hesitate to call me over. But now you know you can make skin tone with just the primary colors plus white and maybe a little bit of black.